I'm always looking for uh, new technologies to help people build companies or services. And search is a huge uh, deal in the age of context because you're going to have uh, maybe a hundred to a thousand times more information just about your customers. So think about having to search through that to find things. Uh, how do you build a system like that? Do you build it with uh, Oracle? No. Do you build it with Mongo? Maybe. Um, and we're going to hear from Qbox, which has a new Elasticsearch uh, engine right now, and that's they're, they're, pretty damn cool. Qbox. <laughs>
uh, percolation can be thought of as search in reverse. Instead of you typing in a query, getting a bunch of documents back that match your query, instead you can supply it with a document and get the search queries that match that. That might be important in a contextual world, for example, with, say, saved searches or alerts, monitoring, things, things like that. This is a good way to add some notifications to your app, maybe? Yes. You know, certain things happen. If certain events trigger, uh, you know, tr uh, meet a criteria, it triggers another event or a notification that can be easily constructed with Elasticsearch. There's a lot of companies that do uh, searches of log files. Uh, Logly was one, yes. and uh, Splunk, and other, other companies. Yeah. Uh, how does this technology or your company compare to the, some of those more specific log <coughs> file search, search Well, systems? for example, Logly, a uh, company I, I do have uh, great admiration for, um, built their uh, business on Elasticsearch. And um, so it's a back-end technology, and Logly has some front-end uh, UI that makes it really great for uh, searching logs. What we do is provide the, the, the back-end plumbing of Elasticsearch. So it, it is about logging, but it's about a lot more too. It's about uh, you know, full-text search, log analysis, predictive analytics, machine learning, faceting. Why, why use this then and then trying to do it in MongoDB, which is a more uh, general purpose uh, database? Well, like I said, Mongo is a great persistent data store. But when it comes to search goodness, it, it's not that good. And a lot of the functionality can be done in, in Mongo. It's just harder. And uh, Mongo is one of the primary integration points for Elasticsearch. There's a MongoDB River, for example, um, is what it's called. It's a Mongo River where the data is fed into Elasticsearch. The search index is created and um, you, you query the search index rather than the Mongo data store because right. it's just easier to create a good search experience around uh, with Elasticsearch than it is with Mongo. Tell, uh, it sounds like uh, Elasticsearch is the open source foundation, sort of like we have OpenStack and that's right. separate from Rackspace. It's an mm -hmm. open source foundation right. that we use then internally. Is that, uh, tell me about the difference between Elasticsearch and Qbox. Yeah, Elasticsearch is um, uh, Apache license, but it's not owned by the Apache Foundation. There's a company called Elasticsearch that's getting, getting a lot of momentum. They raise something like 35 million over the last year. And uh, it's that company that is driving the development of the platform, but it is open source. It's um, you know, an Apache 2 license. So uh, it's, it's free, to, free to use and, and offer as a service. And what about Qbox? Why, why do I need Qbox if there's Elasticsearch? What, well, do, what, the, what do you bring to the table? So uh, Elasticsearch, the company behind the project, is focused mostly on training, on evangelizing the platform, and professional support. So large companies that need, that require professional support, that's what they do, and that's application level support. Now, Qbox provides uh, you know, uptime and availability support, but we have partnered with Elasticsearch if, if our customers need application level support, and we are, in fact, one of the only US-based uh, partners in their reseller program. And how do you make money at, at, in this new search world? Uh, so, Q how do I pay for yeah. it? <laughs> so. Nodes are provisioned from the Qbox dashboard, and uh, when you, uh, we just charge by the compute hour. Okay. And can I make those uh, nodes programmatic? So can it be watching certain? Uh, right now, we have or? horizontal scalability. Uh, is uh, is just a couple of. Vertical scalability is not yet achievable. Yeah, sh show so. me what, uh, what's. Right. So you can see here this. So what are we seeing here? So Tell right, me. this is uh, this is my cluster here. I've got a two-node cluster. Here's my index on it. If I wanted to go create a new cluster, I can just go to Rackspace. I can uh, scale up four nodes. Choose the cores. Bunch of. Uh, like I said, the monitoring plugins, uh, six open source monitoring plugins, uh, choose the authentication, whitelisted IPs, for example, and then just create the cluster. Do you have any examples of uh, fun things that have been done with the? 
Yes, Q -box. I do. So this is something that we just created. Uh, this is a Stack Overflow tag trend. This has about 17 million feeds in it. So it's a, it's a beast. And it's just about uh, tracking the trends. And then if I want to, say, compare it to solar, as I was saying here, solar started out with a much bigger uh, install base, but you can see that, that the uh, trend is closing at the same time. The and this is this a database of uh, questions answered on uh, Stack Overflow? Right. So I can see here the, the top answerers on uh, Stack Overflow for Elasticsearch and the top questions related tags, for example, Tire is a Ruby client for Elasticsearch. Very cool. We also have, uh, uh, over here we've got that Best Buy movie search. This is for an e-commerce use case. Okay. For example, this is the Best Buy API, which we've borrowed. There's 107,000 uh, uh, movies in their catalog. If I want to say search for a bug's life, you saw how fast that came up. Wow. And that is, um, that's very important in the e-commerce use case. Yep, because you lose uh, a few percent of customers every time it takes a second or exactly. two. Exactly. A couple of uh, professors estimated that for every tenth of a second of load time, conversions decrease by one percent. That's tenths of a second. And uh, over here we've got facets. So faceted searchers are, for example, 3x more likely to be buyers than browsers, even though not, not as many people actually. So these were pre-designed searches that you put into this page? Well, uh, this is. is a category-driven search in this okay. one, but you can, uh, you can base your facets on previous search results. Um, other things that aren't in this demo, like uh, auto-suggest, auto-complete, which didn't exist three years ago, but now we can't live without it. Uh, did you mean experience? You know, if you have misspelling or synonyms or stemming issues, for example, one of our clients sells flags. Um, you know, if they using Google custom search, if, if the user searched for Canada, they got the Canada flag. If they searched for Canadian, they didn't. And that's because of the stem, the, the word stem there. Interesting. So um, that's uh, an example of some of the problems that an e-commerce merchant might face. Very cool. So th this shows you that uh, developers really can think about their application in a whole new way when you get this kind of uh, system built, right? Mm -hmm. I, you know, ten years ago, I don't think people would be thinking of facets on, on their on their apps, right? right? And certainly not contextual facets that are right. changing as you're walking around or doing searches or behaving with the world or stuff right. like that. Right, and there is a, a, a some of the faceting 2.0 features that are coming out um, when uh, version one of Elasticsearch comes out in a few weeks. Um, it's just curve fit, machine learning, faceting, it's just, it's just mind blowing. How are you seeing people use mobile data in, in their searches? You know, because now you know where that user is actually, what street they're on, right? You know, right. And are they are they at a bar or a church or a school? You know, so you, you can almost uh, bring that kind of data. Geo in. Geo is another great example of where Elasticsearch excels. So we've got a Geo Search demo here, and so in Google Maps API, if I wanted to say draw this down to the Fort Worth, Dallas area, you saw how quickly those results came up. I've got facets here. This is fake data, but if I, uh, with the Google Maps API, I want to increase the radius. No, that's, yeah. and that's when we are starting to see this new kind of contextual app that's researching based on, right. um, based on where you are, who you're with, mm -hmm. what you're doing, you know, soon our operating systems are gonna know that you're walking or driving right. or running or skiing or shopping, right? right? And it's gonna change your your ability to search this kind of data right. in real time. And my co-founder Sloan, for example, before uh, he was, before we teamed up, uh, he worked on a kind of a door-to-door -door canvassing app for political campaigns. So, you know, you search it, you're in a neighborhood and you wanna find, you only wanna knock on the doors of the Democrats or just the Republicans because you know, the, the other ones are going to ignore you or maybe be hostile. <laughs> yeah. So that's uh, an example of where, you know, you, I want to search, uh, you know, Jackson, Mississippi for the Democrats. <laughs> you know, that's, uh, 
that's how that can be used. No, that's really, really pretty cool. What's next for you guys? What's your business challenge, I guess? Well, we, we would just like to get better. I mean, there's uh, vertical scaling we'd like to tackle. There's some front end, uh, front end improvements to the dashboard. We'd really like to just uh, keep listening to the customers and, and uh, we really love talking to them. Every, every customer that signs up with Keybox gets my personal cell phone number within an hour. So, and uh, that's, that's, awesome. that's something they, they love us for. They get mine every day. Yeah. <laughs> it's all over the internet. Yeah. Um, uh, how are you funded? And tell me a little bit about your company, the Fundamentals. So, um, there is a Global Accelerator Network program in Fayetteville called the ARC Challenge. And it's just for retailing, logistics, and, and food uh, technology companies. Um, you know, it's the home of Walmart, Tyson Foods, and J.B. Hunt. And um, we were one of the uh, winners of that program and the Arkansas Economic Development Commission, Governor Mike Beebe's office, uh, uh, invested it with us and that, that was um, piggybacked on some local angel and um, professional investors. And it's, it's, so. You can see how important it's gonna be to a Walmart to be able to recognize patterns faster than right. anybody else and you, faster than you did yesterday because yeah. that's uh, how you're going to change they've, the customer experience. They've, right? got it, they've got it down at Walmart. Cosmix, which, uh, Cosmix, which was the company that Walmart bought out and uh, formed the foundation of Walmart Labs out here, uh, did a lot of this same kind of stuff. So, so Walmart's very sophisticated. They don't... Uh, really help us because we're, we're developing something that competes with them, but um, that's, uh, yeah, they, they, they've got it down there. Cool. Where do we learn more about it? Qbox.io. Very cool. Thank you so much for coming on. Thanks, Robert. The future of Appreciate search. It. All right. Thank you.